All right, fellas. Well, I've got our first cabinet pulled up here for us. Jeremy, do you want to give us a rundown of the depth and combination we're looking at here? And then Jordan, after that, if you wouldn't mind uh, detailing the product we used and the uh, the amount of product that we used, maybe that'll be a good time to pull up that layout we have at the ready as well. Right. So, um, gentlemen, just to kick it off, though, um, SignComp. I'm Jeremy Bryoff with SignComp. We teamed up with Principal. We got Jordan Rhodes in here. Uh, Lauren and Ellen are in the back wings. We teamed up with YNA as well to make this uh to make this whole session happen. What we're running into is obviously with the change of LEDs um, in the industry from the T12 lamps, T8 lamps, um, shadows tend to be a little bit of an issue out there. So um, all three of us have joined forces to kind of discuss that and have an open chat as well. Uh, Joe Lupton with YNA, uh, he's gonna be kind of the, the man doing the demos here. We sent them a couple of sign comp cabinets to put together. And um, I'm not going to put words in Jordan's mouth. He can take over in a second. But what we uh, at SignCom sent Joe is a six inch deep single sided. Both of these cabinets are going to be flex. OK, so a narrow solution with a six inch. It's our narrow body with the tension frame, too. And then the deeper cabinet option we send is just over 10 inches in depth. OK, so um, once again, we're just going to have a discussion and, and throw the ball back and forth to each other and um, try to. Uh, try to solve some some issues that might be out there, but I think it's a great conversation to have as far as uh, um, LED illumination. Jordan? Yeah, so in this cabinet, uh, this inch deep cabinet, we actually have uh, the Patriot XL module. Um, Patriot is one of the modules that we make here in um, Texas at our home base. Um, it is IP67 rated. It's pretty much got everything that our other products do as far as the easy pull tab. Um, it's probably one of the higher lumen output products that we use for deeper cabinets such as this. Um, and yeah, there's a lot to it. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how many modules are in this one. I'd have to look at the layout, but. Um, I'll help you out there, Jordan. So we, we actually have uh, four rows that are on 12 inch centers in this cabinet. And there are actually uh, seven modules in each row. Uh, gotcha. I, I think the really cool thing to talk about, and, and this isn't so much about the shadows at this point as much as it is about achieving depth with LED. So uh, lots of things are getting narrower and na narrower, but what we've been experiencing is with optic lens technology, once you get past about eight inches in depth, we get so much loss of output that we're, we're not getting a, a well-illuminated face. So this is a great way we can detail um, what, what we call in sign comp, some of the flat body solutions, but also talk about the Patriot XL deep, which is the product that's going to perform, you know, uh, uh, around 16 inches away from the face, which is something you can achieve, um, with the optic lens. So I'm going to go ahead and get our, our screen for this cabinet, um, turned off and we're going to switch to that six inch cabinet that Jeremy was talking about. And this is where we're really going to highlight and illustrate, um, that shadow application. Jordan, if you or Lauren happen to have um, the layout for this Patriot XL deep cabinet, it'd be great to pull that up. And also as some context, the cabinet we're looking at here is a four foot by four foot cabinet. It's probably hard to get a measure of what you're looking at there on the screen, but we're gonna get that uh, video turned off and we'll be right back in a minute. Yeah, and I believe this layout is, let's see. Yeah, this one's for the narrower cabinet. Um, and that one's also for the narrow cabinet, which we'll discuss that one later. Right. And Jordan, with everybody tuning in right now, um, they're jumping on a little late is uh, just a reminder on repeat mode here is, you know, sign comp sent two flex cabinets over to Joe Lupton with YNA. We teamed up with principal to, um, you know, have an open discussion and try to solve some uh, might be issues when it comes to shadows. So sign comp um, sent Joe a couple of single sided cabinets, one being 10 inch. The other one being six inch, that seems to be pretty ideal for the principal mods. Um, and they're both bleed flex, okay? So um, so what Joe went to go do right now with his camera off is he's gonna go uh, get set up by the cabinet right now while Lauren and Jordan talk about the layout for that cabinet as well. So Jordan, I'm not sure, was, was he getting a six inch ready or was he getting that 10 inch? I think he's doing the 10 inch so that we can look at the XL um, okay. version. Um, in the in the six inch deep cabinet uh, on the 
layouts that we just saw, those actually have the our Patriot Large module. But um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna discuss the deeper cabinet first. One option too that oh hey Joe. <laughs> Back, yeah, so what we were first looking at was that deeper cabinet, and that was just to simply show that with four okay. rows of product on a flex face application at 10 inches in depth, we were able to evenly and completely illuminate that sign without okay. any So we are switching to the narrow. And Ellen's about to turn on our video feed right now for uh, the narrow cabinet. So we have a, a narrow cabinet with that. You can see that shadow on the right side, yes. that's that's our frame breaks right there. So this is where uh, we can start the conversation off on what we're looking at here, Jeremy. Right, so what we're looking at, um, once again, is out of the commercial product line with SignComp. Um, with SignComp, this is a six inch deep single-sided application. Um, obviously we're addressing LEDs and how to properly light those cabinets with the different modules that are out there. So that's why we teamed up with Principal and YNA. But um, so what we're looking at here is just our commercial hinge body. Obviously we're not gonna, uh, you know, be swinging that door open uh, too much right now. But really what we're doing is addressing where the LED placement should be. Because here at SignComp, you know, as, as we get into the hinged flex face cabinets, we do need the braces or the frame supports or the kickers, you know, however you want to term that. Um, those are inside the cabinet. And what we do is we lay that out as sort of a grid pattern. So depending on the height and the width of the cabinet, we auto populate that with um, every three foot on center with a little asterisk there, you know, because if you get one of those odd dimension cabinets that it doesn't work out to be precisely 36 inches on center, you can fudge that a little bit. And so I know uh, a great man used to say that it's an art, not a science. You do have to kind of play with those a little bit. Jordan and P-Led can get you the layout, but it is going to take maybe a couple of times to really get that, get those numbers correct when it comes to our frame support, because we're trying to get the light past the support tube when they intersect. Otherwise, we're going to get reflection off of it, depending on the beam angle. Um, so that's where um, that's where Jordan's going to hop in here and talk about the Patriot series. Yeah, and Jeremy, you make a good point. Um, that's one thing that's helpful when we get cabinets like this, <clears throat> knowing where those those frame supports actually lie so that we can lay that out um, proportionally. From uh, Lauren, if you could pull up those layouts or, or the first one with four rows. And what LEDs were these again, Jordan? Uh, these were the these were the Patriot Large. Okay. So, so just for instance, one thing that we try and you know work with as far as communicating with customers, is, um, if they ask for a layout, this would be a standard layout that we would do, um, and we would lay it out with four rows, twenty four mods, um, not knowing that there's bracing and there are things of that nature that make a difference on the layout could affect the outcome, which is what you see in this uh, video from Ellen's feed where we have a shadowing issue. Now, knowing that information up front, it actually helps us internally and we can actually fix that layout and get you um, set up with the actual row spacing you'll need in order to get that to light without having any of that uh, shadowing issue, which is the second layout that Lauren is gonna pull up. So Jordan, when when a customer contacts you for a layout, they're just basically giving you the depth of the sign comp frame. So say a six inch single sided and whether it's right. flex or rigid, but you would also accommodate if they had mentioned that there's frame supports inside there. Exactly. Okay. Yes. 100%. And, and uh, I know the, the beam angle is wider on these um, optics have changed a lot in LEDs. They, they weren't as wide. They used to be at around 120, and now they're sitting at 170 degrees. So we can, we, we can get away with a lot more, but there are certain scenarios where if you get way too close to that frame support, you could have a shadowing issue. So yeah, this direction of knowing the exact sign comp box that you're using, um, we can make adjustments on what we need to do in order to make the layout work. Now that's single and double-sided, correct? Correct, yes. Hey, Jordan, we actually got um, Colleen who popped in with a question and she said, so we wouldn't be able to use the easy layout tool if we're using frame braces. You know, I'll, I'll answer this and then I'll, I'll see what your opinion is. I, my perspective is anytime there's anything custom or we know anything about additional structure in a cabinet, that's something that needs, I think needs to go to our internal team and layouts yes. to, to get support, so. Yeah, and I, I agree. Um, to me, the easy layout tool, it's a great, um, hey, I'm in here, I need to get this guy a quote, let's just 
throw something together real quick and you can get a ballpark estimate. Um, it's really best for one of our internal members of our team, our layout team, to actually lay eyes on this. And if it, it, it just takes a little bit of extra um, touch to it for somebody to take into consideration stuff like frame bracing. But that is a good question. Um, maybe in the near future, we can look at having that feature where you can add that. I know one feature we do have in the easy layout tool is you're able to um, put, if you have a pole that's in the sign, you're actually able to put the diameter of that pole, but- um, That's a good point too, yeah. You could look into. That's a good point too. You know, not only our structure, but the actual structure for the, that the cabinet's exactly. going into or onto. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. So with here at SignComp as well is, you know, how, how, how long ago did LEDs come around? Seven years ago? six years ago when they became extremely popular. So let's just estimate those years. But um, uh, with that being said, sign comp on our end, we had to adjust, okay? So when people stop by our booth and ask us what's new, there's not a whole lot that's new versus improved. You know, we've taken a lot of our obviously single-sided cabinets and created this six inch. We don't need to be nine, 10 inches in depth anymore when it comes to single-sided. So six inch tends to be about the sweet spot with it. And, you know, with that being said, you know, we found some of our existing frames that were causing shadow, more perimeter shadow issues, if you will, because there was a leg that was built into it that took the frame brace, believe it or not, and the brace wasn't even causing the issue. It was actually the perimeter uh, border. So we improved on that. So the example Joe has here is that six inch deep tension frame, uh, the new uh, bleed tension frame, the 2086, because it definitely took care of that. We, it's, it's also a term as sign comp getting out of the way basically. So we have a sharper angle. So that way we can get all the way up there because not only frame supports, Jordan, but perimeter shadows, people are still, you know, we find that sometimes if there is a little bit of a border issue with bleed faces, they're putting that first row a little bit too close, you know, to the, to the, to the start. So that beam can even get to that angle where they need to, yeah, exactly. they can almost eliminate an entire row. Yeah. And in, in a normal, in a normal cabinet, I was just going to say, if, if we didn't know that, like you said, that with the bleed frames, you actually have to get away from the returns. Um, if we don't know that, most of the time we would go 12 inches on center and that would put where we start the LED six inches from the side. So yes, you would see shadowing on the perimeter of those cabinets for sure. Yeah. So I think uh, one thing that uh, kind of ties into what Jeremy was saying is it's it's really important and, and we're gonna show some beam angle illustrations later on. It's really important to know that uh, all LEDs throughout history have not been created equal. And that's not to say that one is better than the other. They're just different technologies and the way that you utilize them is different. So what Jeremy's talking about is, you know, we have a slant for that bleed. So if our face materials coming, uh, coming off here, our slants here, right? So we've got to get that beam angle to go right inside that channel. Otherwise we're reflecting off the return and creating a bright spot. It's not so much that we've really got a shadow going on is we're actually accentuating the light the problem with this cabinet, and you know, Jordan didn't know anything about structure. It was kind of a perfect storm for this particular illustration is, Jordan didn't know anything about these frame braces in this cabinet. He just built a layout. We told him a depth. We told him it was flex. Uh, I did the layout and guess what? It didn't work. So exactly. I, had, I had to get creative. What's um, particularly uh, difficult about this cabinet is being at that six inch depth with the narrow body when we put that frame brace in that tube support, that tube support's pretty much laying right there on the backer. So it's right there where that optic lens LED is hitting that frame brace and bouncing off. So we're creating this dark spot because the light patterns are never intersecting and going over. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and shut off uh, the video for this cabinet. And a quick reminder for everybody, if you wanna focus on any particular screen while someone's talking or focus on the cabinet, you just double click on the screen that you wanna look at so that you can focus in. I'm gonna run real quick. I'm gonna get these switched out. I'm gonna move that frame brace in this retainer real quick so we can eliminate that shadow. And then we're gonna talk about a couple other options. Cool, thanks Joe. Uh, yeah, and like Joe said too, is I've got our website pulled up behind me. So if there is, you know, if any, if anybody doesn't mind me typing real quick, we can we can pull up any profile you wanted to see. Otherwise, at the same time, Jordan, you can plug uh, principal as well. But the sign count booth. Um, so if there's any questions or real live uh, floor mount samples or cabinets being put together, 
we can hop over into the booth as well. I know the guys are live right now out there. Otherwise, you can wait for my smiling face at 2.30 when I'm, when I'm all wrapped up here. And Jordan, I'm sure the same thing with your booth. Correct. That is correct. Yeah. Hey, I, I got a question for you. So, so y'all do bleed faces or flex faces. Do y'all also have um, cabinets for um, acrylic? Cabinets for acrylic, yes. So even that cabinet that Joe has there, that six inch depth, that could easily be exchanged, just swapping out the retainer for a rigid substrate. So yes, oh, okay. um, that's another question that, um, or that's another uh, example that they should give you in the forefront when they're trying to get a layout too, correct? Right, yes. And, and, and that's what I was gonna say, flex face and acrylic faces, that could make a difference on the layout or the row spacing whenever we're populating it with LEDs. So okay. yeah, that's where I was going with that. Yeah, and that and that's nice too because it eliminates all the frame braces, you know, so then we don't have any exactly. issues at all. So make sure we let that let P Led know that. Um and Joe touched on it before he went and shut the cabinet down was that with the change of LEDs X amount of years ago, not only did the fine comp improve their tension frames by getting out of the way. Um, we also improved our frame braces, okay? We always had, I'll just call it the original frame brace where it was only about maybe six inches into the cabinet. You know, with the change of LEDs from T12, um, uh, T8s, is that it just blew up the cabinet. So there was no issue, okay? It was 360 degrees, just flooded that cabinet. So our brace didn't need to change. But with the beam, you know, the LEDs tend to cast it's kind of a question mark on where that's really going because Joe had touched on it earlier is it could reflect off of the frame support tube. Now it's causing a brighter spot, not necessarily a shadow. So it's kind of a double whammy. But um, anyway, what we did is we actually changed our frame braces as well. We still have the original for, um, you know, some of those slimmer cabinets because now we're trying to get the frame support tube as close to the light source as possible. So reason being is because now we want that light to have enough time to get around that brace and hit the face to eliminate any shadows. So also on our end, if you just let us know the depth of the cabinet, which we're pretty familiar with, but if you wanna do a retro, is that we have the extended frame brace that gets you about 10, 11, 12 inches deep into the cabinet and it's a two part. So you can cut the leg and adjust the fitting on there to, to help adjust for your LED placements, as well as a slimmer frame brace for those smaller cabinets as well. So we're trying to adjust and do as much as we possibly can on our end to prevent anything any of the shadows yeah. and i just i want to make a point real quick um adam put in the in the chat he said 2086 and 2107 are great retainers for the led application building flex signs so i don't know if anybody caught that i just wanted to point that out that we still got some people conversating over here on what we're talking about <laughs> yeah and those, uh, thanks adam uh jordan for pointing that out yes those are the two improved upon frames so we always had the original retro frame the 2104 our most popular seller for retro applications that still exists but we just did that improvement where we eliminated that leg that was catching that edge and causing a perimeter shadow which is now the 2107 um, and then in turn where adam had mentioned the 2086 we have the 2085 still um, but once again, that little leg where the brace slides into is causing that shadow, hence the 2086 now for improved, um, improved full illumination for bleed applications. Hey, real quick, um, now that we're looking at beam angles, uh, Jordan, would you mind, or if it's uh, actually Lauren that's doing it, Lauren, would you mind pulling out the original narrow cabinet layout? And then as you do that, I'm gonna have Ellen turn on the screen. I didn't put the retainer back on because I wanted you to see how unique this layout is that we ended up doing for this particular cabinet. And this is what allows us to double up the intersect of these optic lenses. Ellen, if you wanna go ahead and turn that one on. So real quick, we're focused on, I'm focused on uh, Lauren's screen right now. You see, we've got four rows of product. It's roughly at a 12 inch on center spacing. And if you click on Ellen's screen, you'll see that we've got six rows that are pretty much side by side. So what we're doing is we're getting that LED far enough away from that frame brace. So there's that, that air space for those beams to intersect, to blend and to hit the face and to be evenly illuminated. So I wanted to show it real quick before I put the retainer back on so that you guys saw that uh, getting sometimes we have to get a little creative here and what we think as oh man this is this is the way that we illuminate cabinets right we're gonna you choose a row spacing and you just stick on that row spacing 
Um, in this particular scenario, with a four foot uh, by four foot cabinet, if we did 12 inch on center, um, we're not able to move that frame brace out of the intersect. So we've got to make that gap a little bit larger so that we have that room. So we're going to go ahead and turn off the video one more time. I'm going to put the retainer back on so we can see the result after I move that frame brace into one of those gaps. Be right back, guys. You know, Jordan, I had a, since Joe took that retainer off, I did have a question about the layouts. Um, yeah. Now, by having all the rows and modules um, all in line with one another, do you think it'd be better off to stagger those? So now we're getting full illumination. I know I'm going to use a lot of hand motion here and trying to, you know, talk about what I'm what I'm what I'm getting after here is that if we have the modules that are all next to each other and we draw a circle where those beams are coming out, there's going to be a dark spot in the center, no? To where if we offset those, now you're getting full illumination across the board rather than having that little dark spot in the center. So yes, I agree with you, but at the same time, it, it depends on the LED and the optic that you're using. Okay. So um, if, if you've got even row spacing and the optic is wide and it's, um, it's, it's wider and they're all uniform, mm -hmm. then you can do them regular row spacing side by side. Now, if you have maybe a, a little bit narrower beam or depending on if the depth comes up to for, instead of six inches to three inches, mm -hmm. Staggering may help keep you from getting that shadowing where you see individual modules behind the sign face. Okay. Um, and before we get to the next uh, beam angle slide here, Adam had another um, more of a comment in the chat box. That's more towards you, Jordan, with the oh, looks sorry. like it's all Patriot, the small, medium, large XL in combination with cabinet depth. Oh yeah, so he said, can you discuss the importance of choosing the right module based on lumen output and how it relates to depth? Um, and just some of the examples he gave were the Patriot and the small, medium, large XL, or maybe the quick mod one, two, three, or four. Um, discussing or possibly discussing the relationship between the beam angle with its depth as well. So um, I'm, I'm glad you brought this up. One thing that, uh, with these two cabinets, we've got a 10 inch deep cabinet, and we've got a six inch. Um, the sweet spot or the module of choice for those types of cabinets, if we were to you know, get a request in, would definitely be the large and the XL. Um, when you get to the cabinets that are anywhere from two inches deep to about five inches deep, um, you're looking at your small, your small would be for your shallower two inch deep. And then as you progress up to the five inch deep, um, Patriot medium is really a sweet spot. Um, the difference between the Patriot medium and the quick mod is obviously voltage. Um, all of our Patriot line is 24 volts, so you can make longer runs um, on a 24 volt power supply. And with the quick mod, it is a 12 volt. Um, this four by four cabinet, it really didn't make a difference on power supplies. But when you get to these bigger jobs, um, you'll definitely want to probably switch over to the 24 volt version. You know, <clears throat> even though we're discussing single sided Jordan, what about, what about double sided? Is there a Patriot available for double sided cabinets or do you switch, um, you know, to more of the, uh, your stick pr uh, profiles? Yeah. So it, it, it really depends. Um, we do have, we do have Patriot on stick, the Patriot stick. Um, we have a Patriot XL deep stick. Um, and we also have our, our tap out, um, again, Patriot's going to be our 24 volt option. And then we have our, um, tap out, which is also available in 24, but we mainly sell on a, in a 12 volt platform. But, um, if you're where I would steer people as far as using either Patriot or tap out, um, would be based on depth and also lumen output. So you, you just have a, a lot of different variety of options when it comes to that. Uh, some people, and, and a lot of the Patriot sticks and a lot of the tap out sticks, some of them compare pretty close. So um, price, performance, and um, what's the other one? There's three things that we think about when we're doing layouts. and. And if a sign company decides that price is more important and they want to get it a little lower, they go with that option. So there's there's a lot of factors that go into which product we actually choose. But both the tap out and the Patriot sticks are good options. So we have 
the max we have in flex is a double-sided 24 inch deep cabinet with that being said i thought i heard you say something about a 12 inch but would you be able to do one row through that or would you have to do two rows of the sticks so like uh when you say one row or two row do you mean one row down the center of the cabinet yeah. shining both yeah directions? Yep. or does that or does that have yeah. more to do with the internal supports and all that like would you run two rows side by side and that way you can adjust so, the depth to the face or would you just do one side yeah so structure is a big thing um just like with single-sided cabinets so if you if you have any information about structure we definitely need that information up front or we can um talk it through if you gather more information but at a 24 depth, you can go one row down the center no problems with either the patriot xld or the uh tap out stick so both options in a scenario like that would be really good gotcha i'm not going to name names but i was at a uh customer's facility not too long ago and he actually did something pretty neat he actually marked he had he had your sticks and he actually marked where the frame supports were and he attached that directly to the supports so horizontally because he only put vertical supports in and he had it attached directly to the back side of our um frame braces so that way no matter what if he hinged that open he just had a longer whip or a tail on it to service the power supply when he hinged that open so by putting those directly Dang. onto the frame support you were already bypassing that and no problems at all yeah and see we've we've actually had a, a lot of people and we get pictures um from people when they're installing you know just verifying that the power supplies are split up right, right. Um, but one thing you brought up a good point is you know there's a lot of internal structure running through the sign so with a double-sided stick you may have the option to mount that stick to that support to kind of keep that stick also handy or keep it sturdy so that you don't have to worry about it moving around we we do have um our quick stick mounting brackets um but when you get to like a 10 foot stick um there's a little bit of flex in it so it's always good if you can use the structure inside of the sign to help mount um the sticks in there another cool trick for that is actually uh fastening like the acm as a baffle to the front of the frame braces i've seen plenty of guys actually do that so instead of having to integrate a stick they just peel and stick modules on that baffle that's in front of the frame braces so you're never having to worry about it. and that's where you know what jeremy was mentioning about the extended frame brace really comes in handy is this assists in getting in front of the frame brace by pushing the frame brace further back into the cabinet and to tie in a little gotcha. bit to adam's question um you know optic lens existed because we wanted to use less product and get shallower um, but we still oftentimes are victim to hot spots because of output so hypothetically uh, in certain thin scenarios, if you had like a three or four inch deep flex and you put quick mod four in there, I don't know that you'd be able to do it without having shadows because the output is so much from that quick mod four that we're, we're not able to get any of that overlap, just the, the brunt force of it. But you dial that back to quick mod two and it's it's easy sailing, right? So sometimes it's a, right. it's a dialing in of optic technology versus output and sometimes too much output is actually not doing you any favors um but right. now we've got the cabinet up um i moved the frame brace to the right and it's dead center between those that middle double row and that right middle row and our shadow from our frame brace is gone so this was uh, a combination of two things and then i'll let jeremy and jordan take the reins so one, it was being creative with the layout. And two, I didn't weld the frame brace in place before I illuminated and checked the cabinet out. I was able to move that frame brace. Are we, are we able to make that the big screen? Are we able to make that the big screen? Double click it. So, oh, that's a great point, Jeremy. Anybody who's <laughs> just joined us, if you see the cabinet and you want to dial it in, you just double click whichever screen you want to be the largest on uh, on your video. Because I see um, Oh, there we go. And again, if anybody's Apologies. just joining us, Jeremy was doing this before. I'm Joe uh, with YNA. We've got Jeremy from SignComp. We've got Jordan from Principal LED, and, and Lauren's hanging out in the background, also with Principal helping us out with uh, with uh, screen sharing and slideshows and all of those things. So this guy right here, oh, Joe, ahead, if you want, if you want to kind of do a recap of what just happened as well as 
you know, we have a six inch side comp, single sided cabinet here. Um, Adam had a good point as well. But anyway, we have a six inch bleed frame from side comp. So overall depth from face to back is six inches. Jordan here supplied Joe with a layout and the LEDs. Uh, a few minutes ago, Joe had the frame brace causing a shadow. All right. So if you're just tuning in now, he did a quick Houdini, shut the lights off, move the frame brace. How, how, how far did you move that brace? I moved the brace uh, five inches. Pretty significant. So so in the sign comp, in the sign comp world, we recommend 36 inches on center for our frame supports. So the little grid pattern that you see behind me. So, you know, if you have a cabinet that's, you know, getting close to four foot, we would recommend putting a horizontal brace in there to each their own as well. But what we want to try to do is make sure when you hinge that face open, the face remains taut. And so what we're running into is sometimes they can cause some shadowing issues. Adam just put it in the chat box, but he had a great point too that we haven't touched on is, um, you know, maybe paint those supports matte white. If you do a high sheen or anything, now it's just anybody's guess where that shadow in the hot spot is coming from. Because if you do a high sheen, that light, that beam is just reflecting everywhere inside the cabinet. So if you go with a matte finish, it's going to kind of absorb a little bit of that light, but at least it's not going to reflect it and cause any sort of hot spot in between those frame supports. So what Joe did is now he moved that brace five inches. It's an art, not a science. So uh, it's a great thing you mentioned, Jeremy, uh, and tying into Adam's question too, is um, I used flat white paint in here and all, all of the major suppliers of paint in the sign industry have paint that's designed for the inside of a channel letter or the inside of a cabinet. Um, if it's something that you don't already have, it's definitely wor worth looking into if, you, if you're doing shallow cabinets, if you're doing flex face cabinets or shallow channel letters, uh, it's a really valuable thing. But a lot of times people have a hard time connecting with the idea of what do you mean flat white? That doesn't make sense. Like what, you know, the inside of my coil is gloss white, you know, all of these things you, you would think, well, it's, it's shinier, wouldn't it shine more? And the illustration that I like to give is, you know, you, you've got a beautiful red sports car out in midday sun. The sun is shining all over the vehicle, but no matter what vantage point you're standing from, there's a there's a focal point where you see a hot spot shine on that vehicle. You take that same vehicle that is painted flat any color, and you can't find that focal point. So reverse engineer that mindset to the inside of a cabinet. What that flat does is it distributes and it diffuses that light versus magnifying a certain point. So that beam angle hits hits the return of the cabinet that's gloss white, and then there's just this you know, perfect beam going back to the face, making this brighter spot, right, or a hot spot. But that matte white, it's going to be a really easy, quick addition because it doesn't need to be a perfect paint job. It just needs to just blast it real quick. <laughs> and it can really help to even things out for you. It's a, it's a huge, huge thing to leverage. Joe, was that sound you painting? Was that that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm just making sure everybody, everybody in here knew that was you painting. Okay. <laughs> I should play um, the video. <laughs> um, Jordan and Joe, here's a question for you as well when it comes to LEDs is, I know we talked about this before, but, you know, when LEDs first came about and the beam angles weren't as extreme as they are now, you know, I'm not even going to spit numbers because I don't know what that degree is, but all we were trying to do in the forefront was get our braces as close to the LEDs as possible. And we would always tell everybody to go on either side of the support. Reason being is because we want that light to cross just past the frame support. So that way it has more time to reach the face rather than immediately blasting at a flat rate. And then we don't know where it's going. Is that still the case with these Patriots and other LEDs you're coming up with? Or do you try to get directly behind the support? I would say, so if you have two pieces of support in, in a sign, I would want to be in the middle of it. In between, like in, in between, in between. Still. Okay. Right. Because um, you can take a module and you can place it right up against the return or even, you know, place it right up against the wall. And the further away you pull it away from that wall, you'll see where that beam is actually traveling. Like how, how tight mm -hmm. that beam actually. Yep, exactly. Okay. So I, I wanted to um, chime in a little bit. I tried to, but I was muted. So 
Uh, what <laughs> Jordan is describing is exactly what's happening with the cabinet we have on the screen right now. However, if you're not taking advantage of the extended frame brace that Jeremy was talking about, or if you're retrofitting the lighting in a cabinet in the field that previously did not take advantage of that, depending on the depth, what can happen is if, if I'm going to double click on Lauren's screen, if everybody with me will as well, you look where it says ultra wide, low, low dome bat wing optic. So depending on the module, you see where the lights all the way go into the side. So where that apex point in is, is somewhere in the range of about four to six inches with most of the products we have in the principal lineup. So hypothetically, if you have, you know, an eight inch uh, deep cabinet and that frame brace is almost dead center, you can actually a lot of times put that module directly behind the frame brace because all the light is going to the sides and then vice versa, the next row is actually, if this is my frame brace, the light's gonna go in front of it. So the guy under is going here and here, the guy beside it's going here, the guy beside here is going over there. So light surrounds the frame brace and, and nothing's ever reflecting off of it and it's never blocking anything. So again, that's something that is really a variable depending on the depth. So something shallower, you're gonna have to, depending on that frame brace, you're gonna have to get that frame brace in a sweet spot in between so the beam angles can go over top. But in a deeper application, you just wanna be under it and wrap that frame brace. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. Depth is a lot to do with how that beam angle gets cast. Well, once so, again, it has yeah. to go. It's just another question, you know, is where's your frame supports going to end up? Like Joe said, if it's only halfway into an eight inch deep cabinet, that could be a completely different, you know, setup that don't anchor in the supports just exactly. yet. So you can move it to five, five inches or eighth inch. You know, you never know where that angle is going to cross. Yep. Um, yeah, and so speaking of depth as well as you know those changes I was mentioning before that Syncomp is making with our with our flex frames and bodies and cabinets and, and such, but we 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 even have a tension a single sided tensioning system that goes all the way down to four inch with that same twenty eighty six a slimmer body that hinges open for service. But I'm not getting too too ahead of myself here. But six inch still seems to be the sweet spot, you know, especially with our twenty two thirty three frame that we have. Um, that one is beneficial because it doesn't even have supports. It doesn't hinge open. So all it is is an all-in-one tensioning frame with that extended leg. There's no perimeter shadow issues. All it takes is your backer supports because it's a single-sided application, but you're still at six, but now it's not hinging open. So you don't even need our kickers or supports or any anything sign count that can get in the way. Adam had another comment there, Joe. If putting together a quote for an illuminated sign cabinet beyond height, width, and depth, what are the most important things to let sign comp and PLED know for best results? Ooh, me. Just for me. 500. <laughs> Do I win a prize? Nope. <laughs> Depends I, I on the answer. We, I think we, we, we just talked about it um, and they go hand in hand. Uh, what is our face material, right? And, right and, do, and do we have those frame tube supports? in there, um, th those two factors are huge. Um, what I was gonna say before the question too is, you know, Jeremy casually mentioned the 2233. Um, SignComp has a diverse offering of products. And sometimes you find something that works and you say, I figured this out and I'm gonna keep rolling with this all the time. Um, the 2233, if, if you ask me, right, a single face flex cabinet, um, if you loved it for it to hinge, that's great, that's that's cool, but do you have to have it hinge? And that's really the question. So this is this is the 2233 right here. So this is the same depth as what we did now, except there's no frame braces in this vicinity. Everything's just normal structure that you would put at the back of that cabinet. This is a huge reason to reach out to SignComp to say, hey, I am usually do this, can you quote me on this? ask, hey, what's new? Is there a better way I could do this? Or share your struggles, right? So we can dial in that solution. So an important thing for us to talk about with overcoming LED shadowing is if there's an opportunity to get rid of frame braces, let's get rid of frame braces, right? That's a, that's a huge value right there. 
Yeah, just going with that, it makes Jordan, Joe, and Jeremy's life a lot easier just going with the 2233. Then we don't have to have, have any conversations about shadows. Yeah. But no, that's also behind me. But just you know, feel free to visit the booth to take a look at that um, at the SignCon booth. They're live back there right now. And then also visit the PLED booth as well for more questions with LEDs. But um, um, where Joe went, but um, no, just to finish up on that cabinet too is for anybody who's joining now, is that in the initial state here, that's a six inch single-sided flex cabinet bleed um, from SignComp with the layout of the P-LED behind there using their new Patriot that is uh, manufactured here in uh, the States. Um, Joe had it five inches to the left, which was causing a huge shadow. So we were just here to show you that it's all in the placement of the combination of uh, frame supports as well as the LEDs. Just moving it that five inches completely eliminated that cabinet, or I'm sorry, the cabinet, the uh, the shadow. <clears throat> and which Patriots are in there again, uh, Jordan? That would be the Patriot Large. Um, yeah. Would you Patriot Would you mind ones. pulling up that layout we had again? The 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 uh, the new revised layout for this cabinet, so we can and tie Joe, into Jeremy's recap. Yeah, and then in the meantime too, is uh, Colleen had a uh, had a question there as well. Looks like there's a, a cheat sheet that gives some guidance. Uh, typical sign comp. Uh, I guess that one's mine. Thank you, Colleen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I had it pulled up. So um, with all the uh, variance and depth that sign comp has in their cabinets, as well as the change from T12 lamps. Um, or T8 lamps to now with the age of LEDs, um, Sign Compass had to, made, ha had to make a lot of improvements in their existing frames from our 2104 to the 2107, from the 2085 to the 86. I know it's a lot of numbers, that's just a frame. Okay, so um, we've actually changed the angle on that to eliminate any perimeter shadows. But with that as well, Colleen, is that we have the three different frame supports. So if you have a deeper cabinet, we have the extended frame brace. That is a two-part setup that kicks you deeper into the cabinet. Because with LEDs now, we're trying to get as close as possible to that light source. Because before, we could still be only three inches away from the face with the lamps, and we had no problems. But with the beams nowadays, we're trying to get as close as possible so the beams can get around that frame brace before it hits the face. So we're just trying to make sure there's enough time, as well as sign count, trying to get out of the way. Um, so there's three different types of braces. The one Joe has right there, that six inch deep cabinet, I believe is still our uh, regular frame support. Um, and then the other cabinet that Joe does have out of our flat body series is actually a 10 inch single sided cabinet that we went with the extended frame brace and Joe was able to cut that wherever need be. So with our single sided cabinets, we're trying to get as close to that backer so there's more time for that light to get past that support. So um, when you call SignCom um, to get a quote, we automatically adjust for that depth of cabinet that you have. So anywhere from the wide body or the uh, 24 inch deep flat body, you're going to be getting the extended frame braces. So we adjust accordingly to that. So thank you for that question. Two more questions. Um, so first we have uh, Jonah who said, is it important? And I'm, I'm throwing this to you, Jordan. Uh, is it important to provide okay. graphic details to PLET to provide the best solutions such as dark, light or day night graphics definitely definitely that is that's that's a big thing because with with knowing that information as far as if it's just a regular graphic or if it's a day night um it depends on or it it alters what we do layout wise because um if we did it standard not knowing that information up front with that graphic applied with that day night graphic applied it may look dimmer than because you're not you're not pushing as much light out with a day night as you are with regular acrylic face with a vinyl applied to it so um graphic details is a big thing um one thing that i always try and stress to people when i talk to them on the phone more information is better than less information if if you only have hey i've got a four by eight cabinet and it's eight inches deep that's fine but if you have something that you think, I don't know if this is important, please throw it in there because it, it could be very important and we'll always give you a call if we do have more information. Thanks for that, Jordan. Jordan, we Jordan got looks like we're pitching to you again, so you're up to bat. 
well, Brad had another oh, question for you. Well, I, I had an be... opinion already for Brad. I had an opinion already. So I want to go first, and <laughs> then we'll let Jordan go. No way. Joe had an opinion. Oh, <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> so, so, Brad, I, I think um, depending on the size of the pole, sometimes it can be a, a huge issue if you've got a really, really big sign. Um, but for the average sign where we're seeing things anywhere from a pole that's around – you know, four inches to eight inches. Those are probably the most common pole sizes I'm hearing about. Um, depending on the depth of that cabinet, really oftentimes it's moving the LED far enough away from that pole. So again, where we were talking about those beam angles, if Lauren can throw that up again, that that beam can shoot around that. So if it's a large pole, I, I think this is an opportunity to do two things. One would be mounting single-sided sticks in front of that pole so that we get the leds closer to the face or if we use the patriot xl deep it doesn't have an optic on it so it's direct light to the face so uh, you can almost get away depending on the depth of that cabinet and if it's a large pole odds are that that depth is going to be there for us use that patriot deep, and you're going to you're going to completely miss that pole and you're going to have even illumination on the face Jordan, also, isn't it good to know in the forefront, you know, just like our supports as well as the yep. support on the yep. inside? Yes. Yeah. And and one or I've had this happen a couple of times and it's really tough, but we, we can make it work. Um, we've had people send in layout requests and uh, they've got a sign that's four foot by eight foot and it's eight inches deep and it's got a six inch pole. So literally the face is two inches away or actually one inch on each side away from the face. And so it's kind of hard to not get a shadow from that, but we'll populate it the best we can to eliminate as much of that shadow as possible. But that's where we have the conversation up front and say, hey man, that pole, it's, it's pretty big for the internal guts of that sign. Um, you may see a shadow on that. And that's just one of the things that's a little hard to find a, yeah, and I don't think it's something that you, I think it's, there's, there's a learning curve for that to say, listen, you're going to need to, if, if you have been required by engineering to have a pole that diameter that's in the ground, right? Have that pole taper, right? right. Taper, if it starts as six, exactly. you know, let's see if we can taper that down to a four inch pole. That's really going to help us out um, exactly. or, or figure out another mounting provision or make the cabinet deeper. So some of, sometimes like we say yes to the customer, right? In a certain application, can we, can we put this six inch deep cabinet on this six inch pole? Well, sure, I'll figure it out. And then it's like, oh, I have this great dark line in the middle of my head. It's like, yeah, that, that's gonna be there. That's just, <laughs> that just is what it is, right? Exactly. So Jeremy, we hadn't yep. gotten to this yet and okay. I'll, I'll figure I'd prime you for, for our newest frame brace provision. So with, with the longevity <laughs> of lighting um, in our, uh, our market right now, um, having to hinge the service. You know, we're used to changing out ballast and lamps every year and a half to two years. So that, that feature with sign comp of being able to hinge that cabinet is a huge value in that scenario. Um, but if we're retroing something in the field or even building something new and want to eliminate frame braces, we have called the retro. And I brought an illustration. So here's our 2107. Typically what happens is we have that frame brace that kicks back like this and then it goes down to the complete bottom of the cabinet, right? So with the new retro frame brace, it actually goes to the backside to the other face and that counter pressure from the other retainer compresses and it supports that retainer system. So this is another great way that if you're having shadowing issues, especially if you went to go retro something in the field, this is a way that we don't have to get super creative about where we're populating, where we're putting stuff, whether it's single-sided or double-sided sticks. You use this guy, you're not going to have a problem illuminating that face. Yeah, exactly. So like Joe mentioned, that's called a retro frame brace. We've had it for a couple of years now. It just tends to get a little bit buried or overlooked with our everyday hinge cabinets. Um, so with a lot of these retro fits, you know, those that 2107 profile that Joe just mentioned um, is that some of these are so big that you're not going to try to hinge it open anyway, or they're so deep that you have a little service door 
or because the LEDs are lasting so long, you just need a little spot where your power supply is sitting to be able to change that out. You're never gonna really have to get in there and service the LEDs. Um, and so with that being said, is rather than having all the weight, you know, that could come with the supports in the grid pattern, if we're just doing a simple retro, you can have that support for a double-sided application connect laterally through the cabinet. So now it's pushing on one another rather than having that grid pattern. So there is a little bit of thought pattern in the, uh, in the forefront is that knowing that, you know, we can't necessarily tension and get everything ready in your facility. It's going to have to be more of the assembled on site, add the frame supports and then tension your face because of how that support is hitting. Now, if you're doing a regular, regular retro, you have the option of putting a couple of frame supports, tensioning in your facility and taking it out and just fitting it over like the top, excuse me, like the top of a shoe box. You know, so retro frame rate, sign count is definitely thinking of everything. So we have that little support that even even more so eliminates some of those shadow concerns. Um, you can see actually a great sample in the sign count booth. Right now we've got clear faces in about, I think there's four, um, four retro frame supports on a clear face cabinet that's only being supported by our retro frame. So if you want to head over to the sign count booth, we can take a look at that. Or if there's more LED questions, Jordan and the team at their booth is available as well. Yeah, definitely reach out to us, go to our booth. Um, if you have questions for me, um, I'll get Lauren to post my email and my, my contact information. If you have any other questions, please holler at me. Um, I'm available and awesome. we're here to Hey help. Jordan, would you mind giving us a little teaser of, of what they would expect to see in the principal booth? Uh, yeah. Is it Daryl? We have some. Daryl? Is it Blake? Is Lauren. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, we've got. I think, I think right now we have Daryl and oh, Will in the booth. And what, what do you have anything new or, oh, new or, or uh, intriguing that we could entice uh, our, our viewership here with? Um, one that I saw this morning that was really interesting, if you, if you missed it, was uh, Gary. He is working on the principal services side with some of our RGB control systems. That's a really neat one to go check out. Um, trying to think of some other things we've got. I mean, we've got our Patriot line, some of our Patriot sticks that we just came out with. That's a really cool one to also check out. What about you, Jeremy? What, what what should we expect to see in the sign comp booth so we can get some people heading that way as well? Oh, man. What can you expect there? Well, I figured, I figured you could fill the next uh, 12 minutes that we have less with yes. everything you've got in there. Well, there's a quick view if you've got uh, that screen share open up to the full screen. We actually have our entire ISA booth set up in the back. Uh, for those those of you that have uh, oh, yeah. visited us at past shows, we actually have two 30-foot booths set up across from each other, and we just brought that to real life here in the back of our facility. So we have uh, tensioning demos, cabinet building, uh, many floor samples, post and panel, you name it. All of it is set up, and it's, um, uh, it's all – obviously virtual, but it's all live action. So we have cameras set up that are following, you know, Dave, myself, Nick, Jamal, TJ throughout the booth and all the stations. So hingeable cabinets, the frame bracing, the supports, you name it, it's all in that booth. We are in the back of our warehouse. So the second I leave here, I'm just going right to the booth anyway. So um, come catch us there and we can talk about more sign cabinets and, and what we have to offer. Um, was there any more questions as far as the LEDs? I know we're kind of you know, we're eight minutes shy, but uh, rather than loop back through, um, we appreciate everybody's time. Once again, I'm Jeremy Bryhoff with SignCop. We've got Joe Lupton with YNA, uh, Jordan Rhodes with PLED. All we did is we reviewed a couple of uh, cabinet solutions paired with LEDs because now it seems like um, every once in a great while we'll get a little shadow concern. So we all teamed up. Joe's got that cabinet on the far left under Ellen's screen. Um, and he just demonstrated having one support tube on the inside of that cabinet that five inches one way, a quarter inch the other can make a vast difference when it comes to our support tubes with the shadows. Um, Sign Comp has improved by making some deeper cabinet options when it comes to the supports, um, as well as principal coming up with uh, more powerful lumens, as well as the beam angle to try to bypass those. So um, I know the new Patriot series, uh, that's where I'll just hand it over, Jordan. <laughs> Hey, 
Hey, Jeremy, I actually have a question for you. Uh, one product I didn't mention that might be in our booth would be okay. uh, our Flex product. Um, I've seen a lot um, of requests come in and we do do flex layout, so we can get precise measurements on that, but take a sign comp, double face sign. Um, would you see any issues with mounting that flex product to the return portion of that sign if somebody wanted just kind of a, a neon look to that? Um, which part, on the inside or the exterior of it? No, the, the outside, like just line out the outside of it with our neon you know, that's actually, version of that's that. Actually Cool that you mentioned that. We have a great product out there. It's a three inch deep single sided. It's Adam Adam Yorson's favorite profile, but it's our 2042. And what you typically do is you bond a face to the outside. You can slide one in or use a, a flex, but in this particular application, what's pretty cool is people will oversize their aluminum face, attach it to the outside of the retainer. So there's a little lip all the way around the outside and they'll put, they'll put your tubing around yeah. that. So it gives it kind of a halo glowing effect, which is pretty slick. I actually ran into that application a couple of times um, when I traveled with, in Iowa with Brian Vlasic uh, a couple of weeks ago. So yes, to answer your question, long story short, yes. <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen a lot of applications where people are um, yes, you've got the face of the signs, whether it be double sided or single sided, and they've got, you know, channel letters that they want to outline in neon. Um, but I've also seen people utilizing it on the outside of the cabinets. And I just, it gives it a really sharp look, especially if you're looking at it from the road, it kind of catches the eye. Um, just the, the actual shape of the right. LEDs that go I've, around. I've cabinets, also seen, so. um, now we're just telling stories here, but uh, a few applications where they'll take our socket raceway and put your modules on the inside and then just put kind of a clear lens or something on the outside to cover that up. So it almost looks like racing stripes on the side of the cabinet. Um, and then even so, oh, they can still cool. just oversize their face. So that way it's kind of hidden, but you see the glow coming from either side. I've seen yeah, pretty neat things out That's there. Right. Very creative minds in the sign world. Something um, I think would be good to summarize some of the conversation that we've had. We've had some really great questions that have popped up. Uh, in the chat that, you know, brought up topics that uh, we likely should have planned already preemptively to discuss and didn't. So it's great. It's cool to see that we're, we're touching on a topic that uh, that hits home for our customer base, right? It's something that's important to them. I think uh, the thing that I've learned in, in seeing how, how many questions we had and how the conversation went um, is it's really important to, one, get people like Jeremy, people like Jordan, get customer service at SignComp, get the layout team at principal, get them involved in the equation, get us involved in the equation and let us know what's happening. You, you know, sign guys are, hey, we're fabricators, right? We're, we're, we're putting stuff together, we're making signs, we're making it happen, but we're only an email away. So if, if you shoot us an email and say, hey, do you have a suggestion here or is there something different we can do here? Um, that's the greatest greatest asset that you could have is it's it's really our job to solve those problems and to get you connected, you know. And you know if if Jordan gets a question about you know something goofy that requires an extrusion solution, hey, he knows Jeremy's number, he gives it to Jeremy, and vice versa. Jeremy gets a goofball LED question, he can send it our way, right? So yeah. let's open those exactly. open those doors of communication and know th those are the kind of things that we're here to support with and helps everybody learn in the equation. If we don't know there's a problem and you're in the shop and you're frustrated and disgruntled and, and you're cussing whatever LED or extrusion that you're dealing with, guess what? Odds are if you didn't call us and let us know, we don't have a clue, right? So bring us into the loop, uh, clue us in. And if there's a problem, I mean, I know me personally, I, I, love, I love when I get that call and somebody asks for help because if I don't already know how to solve the problem, I'm gonna go figure it out, right? And both of you guys are exactly the same. So this is this is a good topic, and I think it 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 should move forward a little bit further than just these shadows. It's just up that communication so that we can get ahead of the curve on on these issues that have been like a I don't know frame brace shadows have been around for how long, Jeremy? We've, we they, they're never eliminated. They're not extinct yet, right? Right. No. No, they, and, they, and they won't be, you know, no. it is going to take a little bit of finesse, but the more information we can relay to Jordan when it comes to the layout, 
uh, the better off we're going to be. You know, just let them know. Um, SignCon's doing, SignConf is doing their part with the extended frame braces, trying to adjust those, as well as the angle for our frames. You know, trying to make sure there's no perimeter shadows, trying to make sure that we are completely out of your way when it comes to your LED modules. So um, that being said, uh, Jordan, um, Ellen, Lauren, Joe Lupton, thank you everybody for your time. Thank you everybody for joining. We had quite a few numbers in here, so hopefully it was beneficial. Colleen, thank you, Adam, everybody for your comments and questions. Go ahead and catch Jordan over at the principal booth. Um, go ahead and catch myself and the rest of the team at the sign count booth as well. So if there's something that catches your eye or you had more questions, please feel free to carry those over there. Um, or I believe um, Lauren threw Jordan's email in there. Mine is jeremyb at signcomp.com. Joe, are you in a spot? Yeah, I can I can send my email real quick. Perfect. But once again, we can't thank you enough. I know virtual gets kind of tricky. So thank you very much for your time. Um, and if there's any questions, go check out the booths and we'll be able to answer them there. Yeah, absolutely. Jeremy, I appreciate your support. Jordan, appreciate the support. You too, Lauren, even though you're not talking to us. I know you can't respond or whatever. But <laughs> thank you to everybody who joined. I, I know that all of us on this page are going to continually be participating as the days go on. And, you know, you'll be able to um, direct message us if you have any questions or miss something and want to have a further conversation. So thanks again, everybody. Jordan, do you want to say goodbye? You, uh, Jeremy, say goodbye. Yes. We'll Bye, see you all later. Y'all stay safe. Bye, guys. Have a good one. Take care.